Hello computational thinking students. In this tutorial, we will see graph, its adjacency matrix and a pseudocode which converts the existing graph or the adjacency matrix into a dictionary. And this is the outline of the tutorial. Let's consider this given graph. If we observe this particular graph, we can notice that it is a directed graph and each edge is labeled with some number. So we can say that it is edge labeled directed graph. Now let's try to convert this graph into its equivalent matrix. The matrix representation on the right hand side represents the graph on its left. Each edge in the graph is represented in the matrix with its label. For example, there is an edge from vertex 0 to 1. This particular edge is represented in the matrix in its first row 0 to 1 where it says 3. Similarly, edge 0 to 4 with label 8 is represented in the first row last column which says there is an edge from 0 to 4 and the label is 8. Similarly, all other edges are added in the matrix. As this particular matrix stores the information about connections among all the vertices. Hence, this type of matrix is referred as adjacency matrix because it tells us which vertex is adjacent to what all other vertices. Computer system cannot understand or cannot store this graph structure or even the matrix structure as it is because so far in this particular course we have studied only two types of data structures namely list and dictionary. Now we will try to store this given adjacency matrix into a dictionary so that it can be stored in a computer system and it can be processed further using a pseudocode. The equivalent representation of this particular adjacency matrix in terms of a dictionary will look something like this. If you look at this particular variable matrix, it's a dictionary of dictionaries where the first level of dictionary stores four different keys 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. These four keys represent row indexes from the given matrix. Against each row index, there is a sub dictionary. This nested dictionary again has four different types of keys 0 to 4. Those nested dictionary keys represent the columns of the matrix. Therefore, by using a pair of two keys from dictionary, we can access any element inside it, similar like a matrix over here. For example, if you want to access the edge between vertex 4 and 3, we will refer it using row 4 and column 3. Similarly, over here also we can refer it as matrix of 4 of 3, which will give us its label value which is 3. This particular table refers to the list of all the edges in the graph. Matrix of 0 of 1 equal equal to 3 because that's the place where the number 3 is stored which represents the edge from vertex 0 to 1. This particular representation in, in the list of edges table is exactly identical for adjacency matrix as well as the given dictionary matrix. Now let's look at the pseudocode which creates a matrix structure using the parameters rows and columns. This particular procedure will create a dictionary which can be used to store any adjacency matrix of sides, rows, columns. 
these number of rows and columns can be passed as a parameters to this procedure and at the end the procedure will return a matrix of that particular size this particular matrix is nothing but our standard dictionary which will have all its values set to zero now let's go through this particular procedure line by line and let's see how the dictionary will be created for example if we call this particular procedure with values 5 comma 5 which means we want a matrix with 5 rows and 5 columns now we have to create a dictionary which has 5 keys inside and against each of those keys there will be a dictionary and inside that dictionary there will be another 5 keys as we have seen in the previous slide now let's try to analyze this particular code line by line we have declared the variable matrix and initialize to empty dictionary next variable i is set to 0 now we will start the outer while loop where we are checking whether i is less than number of rows or not as the value of i is initialized to 0 and the value of rows variable is 5 so the condition is true we will start the outer iteration inside we are setting matrix of i is equal to empty dictionary matrix of i refers to matrix of 0 this will create 0 as a key inside the matrix and will allot empty dictionary as its value after this we are setting another variable j is equal to 0 which will be used to count the number of columns using the nested while loop in that inner while loop we are again checking whether variable j is less than number of columns again in this case 0 is less than 5 as this condition is true we will start the execution of the inner while loop now over here we are setting matrix of i of j is equal to 0 this will create one key j inside matrix of i if you remember matrix of i is nothing but matrix of 0 therefore this particular statement will create an entry 0 colon 0 inside that nested dictionary then we will increment the variable j and restart the inner iteration of the while loop variable j's value is 1 which is less than 5 and as per the first line in that particular loop we will create another key inside matrix of i with key value 1 and so on which will create the entire nested dictionary against outer key 0 after this particular point our inner iteration will stop we will increment the value of variable i and restart the outer iteration this will create a outer key 1 and because of that inner loop it will again create a inner dictionary with 5 keys just like what we did now same process will continue for outer key 2 3 and 4 at this point the procedure execution will stop and it will return the created matrix dictionary thank you for watching this tutorial happy learning